Hi, my name is Dr. Ross Hauser. Welcome to the Hauser Next Center. Going to talk about a really interesting topic called brain zaps and brain quivers. You probably never heard of this, but it's a real thing. So you can imagine you're just sitting there and all of a sudden you feel electricity in your head. Like, talk about scary, right? Brain zaps, also referred to as brain shivers, flips, or shocks, are brief electrical shocks or vibration that are experienced inside a person's head. So I've had vibration in my body. I've never had electrical shocks inside my head, but can you imagine how scary that is? This jolting sensation or a brief popping or zapping sound is often associated with the discontinuation of various medications, including antidepressants. So that's what you see on the internet. I'm just here to tell you that there's other causes beside getting off of medication. That's why I'm making this video. Because I've had patients recently with brain zaps, and I just want to explain the structural cause of brain zaps. So in other words, if you're somebody who has electrical shocks inside your head, like just like you're getting electrocuted, uh, basically I'm gonna explain the causes of that. So lateral eye or head movements can trigger many people who experience brain zaps. Some can even hear their eyes move. Whenever you have a condition and it's lessened or it's increased by motion of your neck, there's a very good chance the neck is actually the cause of it. So that's a really important point. Other associated contributing factors that make somebody more likely to get brain zaps or other ancillary symptoms are anxiety, fatigue, headaches, migraines, hearing loss, trigeminal neuralgia, and white matter lesions. So that's from a study. You know, these things are associated with brain zaps. So the next couple few slides are the most important. So basically the brain is surrounded by a connective tissue called the dura or the meninges. So basically they're connective tissue. So what innervates those tissues? Because obviously we all know like sciatica or a pinched nerve, or you got a pinched nerve in your neck, then it zings. Well, basically the coverings of the brain can do the same thing. You could have a ner neuralgia of these nerves and basically it's transmitted to the dura or the meninges, just like you could just be sitting there and all of a sudden you could get a zing down your arm or down your leg, the same thing occurs with your brain. So the dura mater that surrounds the brain is innervated by the trigeminal nerve, the different branches, the sympathetic nerves, the sympathetic nerves originate in the neck primarily from the superior cervical sympathetic ganglion that sits right in front of the second cervical vertebrae and the third cervical vertebrae, as well as cranial nerves one, cranial nerve two, and the vagus nerve. Irritation of any of these nerves can give you brain zaps. So let's just talk again about the neurology. So we know, you know from a lot of the videos that I've made that the vagus nerve sits right in front of the cervical vertebrae. So any sort of destructive change or broken neck structure, which I term cervical destructure, can put stretch or compression on the vagus. So that's one cause of brain zaps. If somebody has ligamentous cervical instability, so if you have clicking, popping, grinding of your neck and you have brain zaps, it's likely they're connected. It could be even that the lig ligamentous upper cervical instability is actually causing the brain zaps. Then the trigeminal nerve, the trigeminal nerve originates in the brain stem. The neurons in the trigeminal nerve, they go all the way down to the C2, C3 level in the spinal cord. So again, any sort of upper cervical problem, upper cervical instability, cervical destructure, irritation of the C1, C2, or C3 nerves can irritate or stimulate the trigeminal nerve because 
there's the trigeminal cervical nucleus. So there's a connection between the upper cervical nerves and the trigeminal nerve right in this region. So if you're somebody who has a lot of neck tension at the base of the head, muscle spasm, you continuously need chiropractic care, you go to an upper cervical chiropractor and you can't hold adjustments, these are all symptoms that you probably need some prolotherapy to tighten the ligaments in the upper cervical region. And again, irritation of the C1 nerve, C2 nerve, vagus nerve, trigeminal nerve, those innervate the dura that surrounds the brain, so irritation of those nerves can lead to brain zaps or brain quivers. And again, this just shows that somebody's having a issue with the upper cervical region. It's irritating the vagus nerve, causing cerebral spinal fluid block, causing stimulation of the trigeminal cervical nucleus. It's irritating various nerves and the person's getting brain zaps or brain quivers. This just kind of explains the facial nerve. It's actually a slide that's supposed to be for a previous talk that I did on Bell's palsy. So Izzy put it in the wrong, but since it's here, we might as well discuss it. So basically the facial nerve goes into the stylomastoid foramen. And what's interesting about this slide, even as it relates to brain zaps is you can see that the vagus nerve, it connects with the sympathetic nerve, which connects with the various nerves. So remember I said even the sympathetic nerves in, in the upper neck can lead to brain zaps because the meninges, the dura mater that surrounds the brain has nerve endings from the upper cervical region, sympathetic nerves or sympathetic ganglion. And even the facial nerve with Bell's palsy is connected in part with the sympathetic nerves with the vagus nerve. So that's uh, an important slide here. And then this really shows it, right? You have the brain stem, you have the jaw, you have the facial nerve, right? And that if you get paralysis of that, that's what causes Bell's palsy. And then see that you have the C1, C2 nerve. Now the C1 nerve exits right here, the C2 nerve exits here. They innervate the upper cervical muscles and they also innervate part of the dura mater that surrounds the brain. So that's why if irritation of these nerves is causing brain zaps, you would expect the person to have some tension up here. And the reason why there's muscular tension in the upper cervical region often is because there's upper cervical instability. When the ligaments are damaged, the bones move in ways that are damaging to the body. That's why ligamentous cervical instability is a uh, symptomatic and can cause a variety of symptoms because if it these bones move too much it can affect a lot of different nerves including the vagus nerve the various ganglion of the vagus nerve which go into the digestive tract there's innervation of the heart from the vagus nerve the vagus nerve controls inflammation in the body. So if you're somebody who has uncontrolled inflammation in the body, it might be actually a structural problem. You've been diagnosed with autoimmune disease. So when you have upper cervical issues, it can affect any of, the, and basically any of the nerves that go to the dura mater and thus give brain zaps or brain quivers. And again, the C1 nerve, look at it, it goes right over the C1 vertebrae. The C2 nerve goes right by the C2 vertebrae. Any sort of issue in this region can lead to brain zaps or brain quivers. So the spinal accessory nerve, that innervates the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the trapezius. So if you're somebody who has brain zaps, brain quivers, and you also have tension here, well, it's likely the problem is in the upper cervical region. 
So when you have ligamentous cervical instability, the atlas can move in ways that it's not supposed to or move excessively in ways it's supposed to. It can kink the jugular vein and when it kinks the jugular vein, lots of bad things happen including too much volume of fluid in the brain. So that starts affecting brain function. So if you're somebody who's had brain quivers and have noticed brain fog, headaches you know these are signs that it could be that you have a breakdown of your neck curve you have some ligamentous upper cervical instability causing not just the brain quivers but also hydrocephalus or increased brain volume and that can ultimately cause some brain degeneration I'm seeing more and more reports on people in their 30s, in their 40s, that the brain MRIs are showing white matter lesions, and my white matter lesions have been shown to be a predecessor to dementia, Alzheimer's disease. So it's definitely take it serious if you have white matter lesions on your MRI. So I just want to kind of read this. I have been reading everywhere I can about this brain pain and I'm very confused on how it affects everyone so differently. So basically we get a lot of different uh, emails to us. I just, this was an interesting one. The only way I can describe these zaps is like having Tesla coils in my brain firing and firing for sometimes up to hours, debilitating me to the point that I can't walk, talk, have blurry vision, but I sure can scream. What I'm saying is when you have brain zaps, there's almost always a myriad of other symptoms. For this particular person, they had blurry vision. Well, it's probably the same pathophysiology, the same structural problem causing both. So the blurry vision could be and probably is related to jugular vein compression, right? So somebody has upper cervical instability. Well, let's, well, let's just read on. It says, my whole brain inside feels like I'm being electrocuted, especially when the zaps shoot around to my brain stem and a little ways down my neck. So it'd be interesting to know if they have neck pain, right? Do they have upper cervical instability? So if they have clicking, popping, grinding in the upper cervical region, the body's gonna try to reduce that motion, right? It's gonna try to reduce the atlas from jamming into the jugular vein. So it does that through the ligamentous muscular reflex. So the person turns, the atlas moves too much. There's a reflex between the ligament and the muscle, so the muscle clamps down. Even I get that occasionally. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll turn too quickly and all of a sudden, boom, my neck every once in a while will just clamp you know, cramp up there. See how on this side, on the right side, the volume in the lateral ventricles here is much, much greater than the left side. So I would expect on ultrasound or a CT venogram that the person would have blockage of the right jugular vein. So that, that, that would be probably the cause possibly of the person's, not just their head pressure, right? You can imagine there's so much extra fluid here, so that's gonna start compressing, if you will, the right side of the brain here. So this person's gonna start getting white matter lesions on the right side of their brain, right? And eventually, if enough brain tissue gets damaged, it's called dementia, right? So this is basically normal ventricles. That's what hydrocephalus looks like. And then you saw a case of that by the previous MRI. Depending on where the fluid accumulates in the brain that will determine the symptoms. Recently I had two patients in the last like two weeks where they're like doc it's coming. So they were upright and then all of a sudden you saw the person, I go that's happening spontaneously and they said that's correct. Then I had another client who had dystonic storms or whole body myoclonus. They did well for a few days then they had one of these episodes, but I told them what position to go into that would drain the brain the quickest. So they said it absolutely works. So I think we had told them to lay on their left side and uh, extend their head. And basically she said, yeah, it got her out of the, 
it got her out of that myoclonus or dystonic storm. So again, for the patient, geez, that reduces a lot of anxiety because then they know that this condition that nobody could figure out, it's actually from the neck and they just got to get their neck structure aligned good, get a good cervical curve. And then of course, with prolotherapy, get the uh, instability resolved. So again, depending on what part of the brain gets blocked by the jugular vein, that will determine the symptoms, but it can even determine like what, where the brain zap goes, right? Where the brain zap goes. Because basically all this stuff is putting pressure on the dura mater. Then the nerve endings that go to the dura mater, that could then cause a brain zap. This just kind of shows that Ligamentous cervical instability can affect the cerebral spinal fluid, the arteries, and then this is where the internal jugular vein is getting blocked by the atlas. And again, even on routine MRIs, I would recommend people look at their own MRIs. You could see here, the spinal cord is supposed to have this white cerebral spinal fluid around it. You could see there appears to be a block here, then there's accumulation of CSF. And this accumulation of CSF, of course, could irritate the meninges. And if somebody wonders, does their condition have anything to do with ligamentous cervical instability? These are all the different symptoms that ligamentous cervical instability can cause. It can cause pain down the arm, ringing of the ears, vertigo, dizziness, uh, increased intracranial pressure, head pressure, ear fullness, drop attacks, vagus nerve dysfunction. If you have brain zaps, brain quivers, and you have some of these symptoms, especially if you have clicking, popping in your neck, or you have tension in your upper neck here, I would really recommend that you get an evaluation to see if you have ligamentous cervical instability. So the way we do it is we do digital motion x-ray. So that's like a movie camera taking a picture of what's happening to your cervical vertebrae when you're moving. And if instability is found, the treatment to resolve the brain zap or brain quivers, or at least decrease them a lot, is going to be prolotherapy. If there's bad misalignments of the atlas or other cervical vertebrae, gentle chiropractic adjustments, especially by an upper cervical chiropractic specialist, somebody who does orthospinology, nuca, atlas orthogonal, those are the three main branches of upper cervical gentle adjusting. When there's cervical destructure or a reversal of the neck curve, then elevating one's computer, having really good posture when you're working on the computer, when you're looking at your cell phone, try to wear prism glasses. So in other words, all of us need to take responsibility because if we continually look down at cell phones, it's likely there is ultimately for all of us going to be some kind of a health problem. Because if God made the cervical curve to go this way, and technology is making it go the opposite way, and we don't do anything about it, it's not going to be good for us. So if you have unexplained brain zaps, you have unexplained digestive problems, heart problems, your memory isn't so good, your personality's changing, you got myoclonus, you have a symptom that nobody can seem to figure out, you should look at, well, maybe I have a neck issue. So at minimum, get a neck x-ray. At maximum, get a digital motion x-ray or some kind of fluoroscopic exam of your neck to see how bad the neck structure is. And again, if brain zaps have a structural cause, the treatment needs to be structural, which can include physical therapy, exercises, curve correction, ergonomics, proper posture, even in an automobile, right? You know, raising your chest, having good posture in the car. Sometimes you need a lumbar support. And if instability is found, then prolotherapy.